Hey everyone, today we're going to use the Speech Synthesis API to have a robot singer sing along while I'm playing the guitar. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the Speech Synthesis API on MDN. You can see all the methods, all the properties, and a sample example. But if we go back and we add the word demo, then we're gonna find a hosted demo about the speech synthesis API. And over here, I can write the text, for example, hello word, and leave the rate at one and the pitch at one and the voice to the default one. And if I press play, this is what we get. Hello world. So the speech synthesis API is using the voices that you have on your computer to be able to play the text that you give it. You may have tried that before on your Mac or Linux machine. You can, do, you can write say hello word, Hello world. And you will get the same thing. However, before we get started, I just want to show you the thing about the voices. You can have, for, I can show you, for example, if I choose a Dutch voice, we're going to go for NL-NL. And now you can actually write something in Dutch. So for example, I'm going to write uh, a Dutch word that has a distinct pronunciation. Scheveningen. And you're going to see it actually pronounces it in Dutch. Now let's go back to the default one here and let's say we're gonna say hello word and I can play around with the pitch and I can play around with the rate so make it slower and increase the pitch and this is how it will sound like. Hello world. You see that's gonna be helpful for us because we want someone to sing along. Of course it's not gonna be perfect, it's gonna be terrible but when you're singing you're most of the times not speaking singing at the pitch of one we're gonna try and increase the pitch because we have a heavy metal song. So I already prepared a small boilerplate of our code. I'm creating an array of voices and then I listen to the voices changed event and then I call the speech synthesis api.get voices. This is gonna give me the list of all voices. Let's console log them. This will be the same thing, the same as the ones you've seen in the uh, MDN demo. And now you get the list of all the voices. This is Alex, the one that we've used. You can also find the Dutch one over here. So when we click on the play button, this is going to call the play song method that we have to implement. And the play song method will have to call the sing method and will take a text and that's going to sing it. So uh, this is the play button. If we click on it now, nothing happens. Let's go ahead and start with the sing. You can create a new variable speech and say this is going to be a new instance of speech synthesis utterance. And I had to look up the word ut utterance, but you can think of it as a word or a speech. And then you have to give it the text. So what text will you, will you speak? This could be a hello word, but instead of hard coding it, we can just pass in the text variable over here. And then on that speech, we can set the voice. And uh, I'm gonna look up all the voices and then find, call the find method. And we will find the voice that has the language set to en-us. En so this is gonna find the Alex voice. You can do the Dutch one here or French one. And then we're gonna set the pitch equals, let's do one, and then for now, and then the rate equals, so how fast will it be? I'm gonna use the variable rate over here. And then finally to play this, you have to call speech synthesis or window.speechsynthesis.us speak and then you give it the instance of utterance which is what we called speech over here. And now to give it a try I can just come here in a play song and say saying uh, hello word and then save and then reload. Hello world. And yeah it's actually working. We will be singing song from uh, the song is called Paranoid from Black Sabbath. So we need to say a sentence and then when we're done we need to say another sentence. So we need to be able to sing and then wait for it to be done and then call sing again. So for example, something else. To be able to know when it's done speaking, there's an event we can listen to, which is speech.addEventListener end. And that's gonna be over here. And then you can console log uh, speech speaking done. Let's see if that works. Reload, play. Hello world, it and works and we get it the first time, and then we get it the second time. So even though when we play these two, the speech synthesis is playing this one first, and then the second one, 
but at some point we will need to have like a wait method so that we can wait a thousand milliseconds. That's because we're building a song and in this song the singer will have to say something and then wait a couple of seconds and then say the next statement. So we really need to know when this is. All right, now how do we notify the outside word, so outside of the sing method, when it's done? And the easiest way here is to use a promise. So you say that the sing method is going to complete in the future, so it will return a promise. So this is why here we return a new promise. And then it's going to be, it's going to receive the resolve argument. The resolve argument is a function that you can call the moment you know that the, the function has completed its operation. So sing is going to return a promise, which means it will complete somewhere in the future, sometime in the future. When it's going to complete is the moment you call the resolve method. So then instead of this one here, we just call resolve. So the sing method is not going to complete the moment you call it. Instead, it's only going to complete when the resolve is called. So now that the sing method is returning a promise, we can call the dot then. And dot then can only be called when a function is returning a promise. And that means when the sing method is over, is completed, I want you to call this callback. And this callback over here is just a function. And if I just say console log hello world first statement, first sentence completed, then reload the page. Hello world, it works. Yeah, and then we can know when the sentence is completed, which means now we can move this one over here. And yes, we are getting the same behavior because the thing just waits for the previous one to be over. But now we can have greater control. We can add pauses. We can say one sentence, pause for a couple of seconds, and then say the second one. So now let's, let's do exactly this. Let's have a pause. Let's wait one second in between these two. You can have a set timeout here, but then it's going to get a little bit complicated. Let's rely more on promises. So let's make a method wait that takes a number of milliseconds and then we're gonna wait that number of milliseconds. So then this wait method will also complete in the future. So this is why we need to return a new promise as well. And then that promise will only resolve in the future. When in the future? Well, after exactly the number of milliseconds. So that's why we call the set timeout function, which is gonna delay the code in the future to the number of milliseconds and then it's going to call this function over here, which is going to resolve. So now we can have a wait method, say wait one second. When it's done, when it's done waiting, I can now sync. It works. So then we have hello world, one second pause, and then it works. The pause will be a little bit more than one second because the speech synthesis tries to behave like a human. So it is now talking like a robot. It is talking more like a person. So it takes pauses at the end of a sentence. Let's add some console logs. So taking a one second pause and then console log second sentence. Now let's take a look. Hello world, it works. Nice, perfect. Now let's go ahead and grab the actual lyrics from the song. I chose a moment in almost the middle of the song. So this is the first sentence that it's going to speak. And then we want to wait one second and then we want to sing this. And then we want to sing, if you're worried about the code getting cumbersome, that's on purpose. We're going to fix it in a minute. And finally, we'll sing the last piece, which is this. Now I will play this. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that make true happiness. I must be blind. If you know the original song, it sounds nothing like it. I have a couple of tricks that we can implement. One is, is just increase the pitch to 1.6. It will sound funny, but it will work a little bit more with the song. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that make true happiness. I must be blind. Because that's a heavy metal song, so the person singing is, has a higher pitch. We, can, uh, we also want to slow this down to 0 0.7, this one to 0 0.8, and this one to 0 0.8 as well. And let's take a look. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that make true happiness. I must be blind. And now, this is quite a mess. It's, uh, it's a bit tough to read. 
This is why I'm going to refactor this to async await. And it's important when working with async await to make sure that you understand promises first. Because async await are just syntactic sugar on top of promises. So you cannot learn async await and then promises, it has to be the other way around. And if you want somewhere to learn promises and async await, then check out learnjavascript.online. You have a full chapter about promises because promises are fundamental in JavaScript. You have to know promises. So you have a full chapter so you can practice it. And it's conveniently positioned before fetch because fetch uses promises. So it's a prerequisite for fetch and you also understand how fetch works properly. And then towards the end, we, you have an async await chapter where you can practice async await. Because remember, async await is just syntactic sugar on top of promises. Now, let's go back. To be able to use the await keyword, which replaces dot then, then the function wrapping your code has to be async. So we add the async keyword over here. And now every dot then, you can remove it because every dot then becomes a, an await over here. So you can do await sing, and then you get rid of the dot then and the closing brackets. And now the way this will work is that it's gonna run this piece of code, wait for it until it's done. How does it know that it's done? It will call dot then, the end result is exactly the same. It's still calling dot then until it proceeds to the next one. So async await is really just syntactic sugar. And now you can see us here, await, wait, and now I do not have to call dot then anymore. And await, and then remove the dot then, and await. And now you can read your code line by line. So sing this sentence, wait one second, sing this sentence, wait until it's done, and then sing this sentence. Why don't we use async await all the time? Well, because this is not a common use case in JavaScript. A lot of times in JavaScript, you want to do things at the same time. While you're doing a fetch request, you may want to do another fetch request. And this is great for performance. But yeah, in this case, we want these to be running one by one. This is why we're using async await. So let's uh, just make sure it's still working. Reload. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that make true happiness. I must be blind. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that make true happiness. I must be blind. So that's it for this week's video. I'll see you again in two weeks. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell and check out my courses that are linked below. See you next time.